The Polaroid Cube is probably the best bang for your buck when it comes to action cameras, but is it for you? Let's see what this thing has to offer. <laughs> What's going on everybody? My name is Tomas and this is the Polaroid Cube. CNA Marketing Incorporated was kind enough to send this to me for review. To find out more about who they are, please see cnamarketing.com. Cracking into the Cube's packaging reveals a quick start guide, an in-depth multilingual user guide, a warranty information, the Cube itself, and a micro USB cable. The packaging is minimalistic and is very presentable. Polaroid has definitely done an awesome job packaging their new product. The base of the packaging includes a magnet that adheres to the cube's base for improved stability during transit. It's a nice touch and it's something that I can appreciate. Polaroid has taken the name Cube to heart. This 1.4 inch squared action camera can shoot up to 90 minutes of 1080p footage at 30 frames per second. The maximum memory it accepts is 32 gigabytes and that's a micro SD card. But me being me, I tried to throw a 64 gigabyte in there, but the cube would not recognize it. So just be aware of that. In addition to that, the cube is weatherproof. Now that being said, it's not something you want to submerge in any kind of liquid. This thing also is capable of taking six megapixel stills, but be warned, those are nothing to be super impressed by. The Polaroid Cube has one thing and one audience in mind, the action camera person that will be using this thing for video on the go. The front is equipped by a 124 degree wide angle lens with an omnidirectional microphone. Now I wasn't able to find specifics on the Cube's microphone. It captures some excellent audio in whatever orientation you hold this camera in. So I assume it has an omnidirectional microphone on board. The top houses the power, record, and shutter button with an informational LED. Polaroid has done a fantastic job implementing this one button use. Press and hold to power on and off. Press once to take stills and stop recording. And press twice to start recording. Very simple and easy to use. Depending on your personal settings of the Cube, you can have it beep to you to give status updates, whether recording has started or stopped, if the still was shuttered, and if the unit has been powered on or off. All of this can be set in the software that is included with the Cube. Interesting fact with the software, it is housed on the Cube, so when you plug it into whatever computer, you're able to set up personal preferences on whatever station. Now onto the back. It is protected by a magnetic cover. You will need a coin or something similar to access it. Here's where you put the micro SD card. Set if you want to shoot 720 or 1080 and gain access to the micro USB 2.0 port. The battery in this thing will last you about one and a half hours of constant recording time. A little longer if you shoot here and there. I found that I was able to make it through an entire day without worrying about losing power. But again, be aware that you get about 90 minutes. One nice feature, the Cube has a built-in failsafe that notifies you when the battery reaches about 10%. It will beep four times regardless of the beeping settings you have set personally. Finally, onto the bottom of the Cube, it is equipped with a magnet, which seemed like a good idea at first, but then I came to realize everything I wanted to stick it to was, it was made of something else that was non-magnetic, effectively rendering this feature negligible. The external design and the strapping wrapped around the Cube was something I thought was just a design choice. Come to find out, it serves a practical purpose as well. The stripes help you identify the cube's orientation, and this is important to the user when you want to start recording. This isn't documented in the user guide, but if you start recording with the stripes in a vertical orientation, you will get the infamous portrait mode recording. Finally, onto the software. Like I said before, it's housed on the cube itself, so no need to go out and download anything anywhere. This is particularly useful if you utilize different stations and you don't want to install software on all of them. As you can, in the most literal sense, plug and play this camera on any Windows or Mac OS X based system. I really like the simplicity of the included software. Now that I've successfully talked you into the bore, let's get into some sample footage. What better day to test the weatherproofing of the Polar Cube than today because it is raining. I also want to utilize this opportunity to give you an example of how this thing will perform handheld uh, while you're walking on asphalt or whatnot. I'm also going to take this uh, off-road, if you will, you know, and I'm going to walk over here into the bushes and whatnot to see how it performs there as well. You can see that it performs decently. Um, it will take some post-production stabilization, and don't mind me, I'm watching where I'm walking so I don't end up flat on my face. With that, let's go ahead and take this into uh, this little off-road portion uh, to see how it performs with uneven ground um, and how the stabilization works out. I believe this camera doesn't have optical image stabilization, uh, but you get what you pay for because it's only $99 USD. Um, I want you guys to get a sample of how the microphone works when it's faced away from me because right now it's, I'm faced directly at it. And as I turn it away, you can see that it's still picking up sound and its orientation uh, to my voice is still 
uh, rather good in my opinion so here is just a sample of what it is you can expect from the Polaroid cube um, I also wanted to be in an area where it was kind of uh, the background noise the ambient noise was significantly louder than what it would be um, if you were vlogging on a city street or whatnot so uh, let me know what you think down in the comments section below of this portion of the camera um, demonstration of the Polaroid cube and I wanted to demonstrate the auto orientation it doesn't take any post production to get this video orientated because right now the Polaroid cube is upside down in my hand so when I start recording as it being upside down it auto orients the video to where it needs to be um, the one thing that you will notice, and I'll jump right, is that when you start video in the portrait mode, and I think that's why they label the Polaroid cube the way it, it's supposed to, because you need to make sure that you're in um, horizontal mode before you hit that record button, because as you turn it, it doesn't auto-orient if the recording is already started. In the process of editing this review, I realized that I didn't have any action footage for this action camera. So I wanted to kind of demonstrate how it looks if I'm trying to hold this and run. So I'm going to go ahead and run, and check this footage out, and also check how the uh, microphone reacts as well. I'm going to go ahead and flip this around and check the omnidirectional microphone once again. Running up the same area that I walked a couple of days ago. So, um, if you are all about exercise <laughs> and want to use this for going on a runs I don't know if this would be the best solution for you at this point I want to demonstrate the stills and the capability of the Polaroid cube uh, acting as a, a camera itself one thing you have to keep in mind is that you can't shutter images while you're recording it's either one or the other with that I'm gonna go ahead and take this opportunity to demonstrate how that performs take a look at these pictures All right, as I draw this uh, demonstration portion of this review to a close, I'm just walking down a decline portion of it. It's about a 5 to 7% decline in grade, so it'll give us a lot of variability in how this stabilizes in that environment. Um, before I close this portion, I'm going to jump into a low light demonstration or um, the lack thereof. So let's go ahead and jump over there. This test is demonstrating the Polaroid Cube's low light capabilities. Um, as you can see, there really is none. So you are going to need an external light source if you are going to use this in low light situations. Just keep that in mind. Here's where the value is in this camera, I think. It's very discreet, so it allows you to get into vlogging. As you become more comfortable in front of the camera and become more comfortable holding it in public, I think this will be your perfect option to start with. It's a very great beginner's um, camera for vlogging because of the wide angle and its cost. And also with that, um, it's great because it's very discreet. So it's something for you to think about. If you want to get into vlogging, it's perfect for that. All right, there is one issue that I noticed when capturing footage with the Polaroid Cube. It ends the audio before it ends the video like a half a second. Just be aware of this when you're recording with the Polaroid Cube. It's something that I think Polaroid could fix with a software update. Um, take a listen to this clip. Um, the one thing that you will notice, and I'll jump right. As you can hear, it ends the to it uh, like a half a second before the actual video is cut. Just be aware of it, and when you're recording, just gauge for it in, in person. So finish saying what you're saying, and then close your clip. The Polaroid Cube is a fantastic action camera. I think there are some things that it could use some improvement on. Maybe add a Bluetooth chip into it. So you can utilize a, a phone app to, to get a, a viewfinder. That element missing is probably the most difficult thing or the most difficult hurdle um, when using this action camera. Outside of that, this thing does everything that it, um, I would expect an action camera to do. There's also another element that I think they should consider changing, uh, maybe removing this, uh, this magnet and changing it to a one-fourth screw or something and then it would automatically mount to a tripod for example. Outside of that this is a very intuitive action camera to use considering it's one button use but I really think it's in dire need of an, a phone application to utilize the viewfinder. Uh, the, the guessing game that you play with the footage is a, is a little rough. This is a fantastic camera for the price 
But I think if they added those few things, you know, like Bluetooth capabilities to utilize a phone, for example, for a viewfinder, uh, in addition to um, changing out this mount, um, this, this magnet for a mount. So would I recommend this camera to you? Uh, that depends. Are you looking for, you know, optical image stabilization or OIS? Are you looking for a, a very versatile camera to which you can utilize your phone for a viewfinder? In that case, I would say no. But if you're looking for something that's cheap and produces excellent quality video for the low price of $99 USD, then this camera is definitely for you. It's very useful in, in an environment to where you aren't so much used to talking to the camera. I've utilized this thing to help improve my skills. So in that aspect, I would definitely recommend it to you. If you're a person that's looking into getting into vlogging or for whatever reason, you can even shoot you know, unboxings and whatnot. But for vlogging purposes, I think this is perfect. But when I say that, there are some caveats associated with that. The low light capabilities of this camera are limiting. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna be shooting in low light, this camera is definitely not for you. But if you wanna get into vlogging, like I said before, this is the perfect camera for that. Uh, it allows you to carry it around, like I said earlier, uh, very discreetly and talk into the camera. And the microphone, again, is freaking outstanding. And you could hear that from the, the sample footage that I provided earlier. Well, that about does it for me in this one. If you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you didn't, please leave a thumbs down and leave a comment down below letting me know what it is that I can do to improve. In addition to that, feel free to check out my channel and check out some of my other works. If you like what you've seen here and what you've seen on my channel, please feel free to subscribe. Again, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. Take care.